Hello and welcome back, my propaganda people. Well, today we have a wonderful episode. This is episode number four of our ZGOC, our buddy build, and this is the episode where we'll pull everything together, show off the final projects between both myself and Joshua Cobra Pla. This will be a great episode. Just a quick recap here in the last episode. Check it out if you haven't seen all this. We started working on the base. Well, actually got a long ways with the base. Creating this waterfall out of a plastic grocery bag and just beginning to pour a little bit of resin. Well, we're going to pour quite a bit of resin in this episode and we're also going to change the background somewhat here. We're going to change this kind of rock outcropping into something a little bit different. But first, let's get started with some of this resin. Now in the last episode we did pour a little bit of resin here so no need to go back into every refresher here but now we have our our model our Zgok in place so I have him in his final pose there and I have to set him here in this position just so I can get the placement right we're going to lock in this right foot here in some resin here so just pouring just a not a big layer not a deep layer at this point I just want to lock him in the place here and get the resin to spread across the surface of this little little lake or basin that we have going on here this first little layer here, this is a clear resin, so I left that to just dry for basically about six hours. It's not completely dry yet, but now I'm going to add just a little bit of tint to the resin itself. And this is just an acrylic paint here, and you can see it doesn't take very much, so I have my resin already mixed up. Just adding basically the tip of a toothpick on there, just enough color. And I'll mix and swirl this together here to get this evenly distributed within the resin. And then I'll pour this over the top of that pre-existing layer of resin that's still somewhat curing here. It's it's somewhat hard sort of tacky but this will cloud up the resin a little bit and add a little depth to the water here and a little more uh, vibrancy let's say to the water itself here so now we're not going to be able to look straight down into the water itself to the very bottom but it will have a little bit of diffusion and then I let that dry overnight and let's check it here the next morning it seems solid a couple of taps with my brush just to make sure everything's nice and cured and it looks great we can move on here but before we move on too far let's take a look at what Cobra Pla has been up to because at the same time I've been working on my base of course Josh has been starting to work on his base as well so one of the best aspects of working on this buddy build together with Josh is that I basically get to look over his shoulder as he's working on his Gundam and now composing the scene Josh is going for a more of a industrial feel with his base He's shown me some photographs, some inspiration photographs of shipping docks and things like that. And so he's bringing in some shipping containers. He's made himself a tarmac here. And it looks to me like he's going to be adding some action scene. This is going to be very interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it all comes together for Josh. Well, let's turn back to my scene. And <laughs> surprise, surprise, but I'm going to change things up a little bit. Now, I've been making this kind of picturesque waterfall. Could it be a nature scene from National Geographic, except we have with a Zgok splashing through the water. But then I got to thinking, and Josh was somewhat influential on this, just watching his industrial aspect, is what if I changed it up and maybe this big rock wall was just a facade that housed some sort of an underground secret base and the Zgok, perhaps that's his home base or perhaps he's attacking it, I don't know. But we're gonna change up the scenery here a little bit on the facade and make it into the secret base idea. And so the first thing I need to do is <laughs> kind of do some re-sculpting here. So this corner initially just kind of dropped off as more natural looking, but let's Let's flatten this out and what's a secret base without a heliport? So just a little bit of plaster, spackling plaster. Give it some edging here with some masking tape. And now I have basically a small tarmac there. Of course, any secret base worth its salt must have some plumbing and pipes and things running around on the outside. And for this, well, this pipe itself, just a regular straw. Get a pack of 100 of these for a couple of dollars. And then using Magic Sculpt to just kind of work out some fittings here to start to integrate this within the rock wall. And speaking of power and generators and things that are electrical <laughs> and, and make-believe here, uh, let's cut away a little bit of this foam here because I'm going to add some gadgets to the outside here. So we're generating power. We have a power plant, but there's a few elements that need to be, say, attached to the outside of the, the facade here. So I've got just basically resin pieces from my spare parts box. Make room for those. Paint them out. So now I've got a few elements kind of indicating that there's more going on here within this mountainside than meets the eye. 
And actually at this point, it's just about, you know, letting your imagination run wild. So why not put another pipe here on this other corner here, just a piece of styrene, again, making a fitting that fits it into the rock wall, painting it out a bit. Returning back to our heliport, of course, we need to land our he helicopters from time to time and put a few stripes there around the outside just to help with the landing. And then what's a heliport without its distinctive circle on the inside? So just using a real quick template here, just basically dabbing on some paint with a sponge and there we go, a nice heliport landing pad. And as to be expected, if you change your mind halfway through a project and start cutting away things and adding things, uh, there's a need to come back and just do a few touch-ups here. It doesn't take very long. And it's, you know, I think in the long run, it's going to be very well worth it because now I have a little bit of a different focus on this rock wall, a little bit of intrigue even, if you will. And as long as I'm fiddling, and of course, working on a base is always a back and forth process. And I'll step back and I'll look at the waterfall and I'm like, oh, it's too much. And then I'll look at it again and say, oh, it needs to be adding some more. Working with bases is always just a back and forth process. At this stage, what I'm doing is just, I've just teased apart some of this cotton and just adding that to the waterfall just to kind of add to that sense of motion and spray. And I think it's starting, at this point, I'm starting to get pretty comfortable with it. I think it's starting to get there. And here we go. We've got a few photographs of where we are at this stage of the game right now. Everything's more or less in place. We've got our changes there. It looks kind of like this installation behind the rock wall. A special thank you to all my amazing Patreon members for your incredible support. Your contributions help me continue to create content for this channel. If you're not already a member, I invite you to join our Patreon community. As a member, you'll gain access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content, early releases, and more. I hope you'll consider joining Patreon and supporting this channel. Thank you very much. So now let's return to the resin and the water feature. You might have noticed, you might notice on the screen that I'm using a different type of resin and that's simply because I ran out of the AK resin that I was using. This is from the craft store and the ratio is different here. Whereas the AK resin was two to one, this is one to one. So I'm just using my kitchen scale that I sometimes make bread with and just measuring out, in this case, it's 32 grams of A and 32 grams of B into the resin. Now this is my largest or my deepest pour throughout the entire process here. So this will be the most resin poured at any one time. Same process, same techniques here. Stir it together, try not to get too much, too many air bubbles in there. Goes cloudy, then goes clear, and you're ready to pour. At this stage, this is another layer of clear over the top of the layers we've poured before just trying to get it distributed all around the base there. It will self-level itself, the resin will, but just kind of tease it along here by distributing it over the entire surface. And then once we have this pour complete, well, this is why things really slowed down with this base. We're gonna set it aside once again, and this will be a full 12 hour cure. So I'll let this sit overnight, and we won't touch this. We won't even think about touching it until the morning. Okay, so now we're going to start with the very much the experimental side of these water effects. This is the first time I've really done a lot of water effects, really focused water effects. So I'm trying a few things here, and we'll see that some of the things work, some of the things don't necessarily work. In the end, we'll make it work out. But I'm using still water here because in my mind, this is the top layer at this point. This is the top layer of, of, the, of the resin. So I'm going to create the water effects, the surface water effects the Zgok is walking through. However, we're going to change that in a little bit, but in the meantime, I'm just using a little damp brush here and I'm spreading these out a bit to create these water effects. So far, so good. Now this still water will dry clear. It'll take about three, four hours before it's ready to start working on again. But here we are, we can see the small ripples and waves on the surface. And now I want to add some little white caps of some foamy water where it's really, the water's being turned up. And I'm using water foam for this. This is an AK product. And I think there's a couple of mistakes that I'm making right now. The first is I'm using this toothpick, which is not the best tool to be applying this. It should be probably a fine brush. And secondly, I think I should have been kind of uh, thinning this out a little bit with water. You can see here I've started to add water. I'm literally learning how to do this as I'm working on my model here. <laughs> you're, watching, you're watching it all happen all at the same time. The effects are good. I'm kind of liking these, but I think they're a little bit over heavy handed, I guess. Maybe that's, maybe that's the word I'm looking for here. And I'm, I'm starting to really second guess myself. I allow this to dry and this is what I've come up with. And I'm going like, ah, it's not quite right. We need to do something here. So then I spent some time just staring at this for a while. Uh, what could I do to, 
I don't know, get closer to what I have in my mind's eye of what the effects are going to be. And what I came up with is let's add a layer of resin or water effects over the top of these white effects here. And that way they'll be within the water or say under the water here. And the resin over top will help diffuse some of these harsher effects. And my hope is, is this will start to give that indication of churned water or foamy water that's underneath the surface slightly. And then I can worry once again about exactly how to finish off what's going to be on the top of the water, just the most surface details here. So first, clear, clear resin here, just overall, as you can see, it's not a very thick layer of resin. I'll kind of tip the base from side to side here in a little bit to make sure everything's distributed across nice and even. We'll set that back and aside for just a little while to let things kind of cure. It doesn't have to cure all the way because I'm going to add another layer of resin. Now, I'm kind of liking how this is starting to come out. Even just that thin layer of resin has really begun to give some depth to these water features. This is one of those happy accidents sort of thing. And so I'm going to kind of keep playing with this idea, and I'm going to try to get those water, f those effects, those first level effects we did, the mistake, if you will, see if I can get them to sink a little deeper into the water. So I'll add another light layer of resin, just a thin layer, but this time with just a slight tint to it. So using that blue tint, this will, again, cloud the effects a little bit, so cloud the water a bit, and will also add some color vibrancy to the top layers of water as well. Let's see how this works. <laughs> Okay, now this is where things get a little bit, again, experimental, but I think I have a method to my madness here. If you recall, I have two layers of resin here. The first layer I poured, that would be about a couple of hours ago, so it's still, it's still, it's not cured at all, but it is tacky. It's got some stickiness to it, so it does stay in place. Then I poured the second layer that's got some color, and I just kind of randomly poured those colors throughout the scene. It's not really enough to cover the entire scene. Now I'm just gonna kind of distribute the, that color layer over the top. Again, this will self-level itself, so I'm not too worried about that, but I can I can control where the color goes. And so adding some extra color along the base of the waterfall to show turned water, some extra color around the foot here, so to really bring those effects and deepen those effects a little bit. I think this is going to work. But those resin effects alone aren't quite enough to to really capture the idea of this guy splashing through the water. So I have this idea here. <laughs> I'm gonna try this. So I'm gonna use some still water and I'm gonna put it on this little plastic card here. I'm gonna make these into little, they basically look like icicles, but they're splashes. They're gonna be water splashes. So I'll set a couple of these in place here and I'll allow this to dry. And this takes maybe, I don't know, hour, hour and a half to dry. And then I'll go ahead and I'll start peeling these off. And my hope here is, my thought is, I can put these little clear splashes around his foot area there and I'm guessing, I'm hoping that this will give it a sense of height so these splashes are, you know, coming out of the water and help give this sense of forward motion as he walks across the scene here. In terms of adhering these little splashes to the base, I'm just using, I've got a new puddle of still water, so I'll use that as my glue, just kind of tap the base of the splash into that and then tap it into the appropriate place on the base, and now I have a splash. Okay, now, <laughs> here we go again. So I'm gonna try to recreate those surface effects I was looking for earlier. So I uh, kind of changed course here. We're gonna do this with paint. So this is white acrylic paint and a fine paintbrush. I think I learned my lesson after the first one here. So the right tools, the right materials for the project here. And I have a little bit of surface feature. So remember when we stirred up the resin before, it did make some of those little waves and things. So I have almost like a template here to follow so I can hit the whites or the tops of the waves and put little white caps there. And then just some basic freehand drawing onto the surface as well. But this is to represent that foamy surface as, again, this guy is just splashing through this, this water feature here. At this stage, everything's getting a little nerve-wracking because I can see it's starting to come together and I don't have a lot of room for error. I can't pour any more resin. It's at the top of its little base in there. So if I make a mistake now, we're going to have to live with it. 
Well, throwing caution to the wind, I'm gonna come back with those foam effects and I'm also gonna mix that with in water gels. So the lesson I learned with the last one is that the, what, the foam effects seem to be a little bit too strong for my taste and for my needs anyway. By mixing it in with the clear gel, then I can distribute that out a little bit, make it not quite so foamy, if you will. I'm also gonna make a gradient here with some blue color, again, the same blue acrylic that we've been using before, kind of a turquoise color, all the way to white here. And for this, I'm gonna just add touches of this around his foot that's in the water just to kind of bring up some of that foam and splash effect. But also, now we have a foot that's emerged from the water. He's taken his first steps onto dry land. And so we need to create some water spillage and drips and things like that here as well. This is all set aside to let dry and cure for a number of hours here. And then one last effect that I want to add, or one last thing I want to do before we start to call this a day is I want to add some wet effects, some enamel wet effects to his foot. Again, just to give that glistening of water as, it's, as he's moved up out of the water and onto the land surface here. And with that, I'm basically done with my scene here. My Gundam, my Zegok is complete. My base is fairly complete, a few touches to take care of. Let's take a look at final photos. Well, let me first say thank you to Cobra Pla, Josh. Thank you very much for this buddy build. It's, I've had a blast, I hope you have too. As you can see here over the screen, we're showing our works together, our Zgox. Two different modelers, two completely different styles, one fantastic time working together. And if that wasn't enough, well, we took our buddy build up one more notch and we each created a scene. Now, Josh here, he went with a shipping container dock type scene here, an industrial scene, full of action. He has civilians, crash cars, he's got guys with weapons, he's got a Z-Gok in battle and dramatic poses here. It's a really captivating. I love this, Josh. And then, of course, I took a totally different tact, <laughs> made some sort of a National Geographic water scene, could, could have come off of some Bob Ross painting. But then I changed it up a little bit, adding some sense of drama, maybe a little James Bond sci-fi with this secret base behind the rock wall scene with our z splashing through dramatically through the water feature there. been just the most brilliant project here. Thank you once again, Josh Cobra Plough, for doing this with me. I've had just a great time. I also want to say thank you to Show Me What You Bought. They supplied the Gundams that we've used for this project. Thank you very much. If you do like this channel and enjoy this channel, please hit that like and subscribe. If you'd like more content, deeper looks into some of these different ideas and techniques, including how I made the water here, please consider joining Patreon. The link for that is in the description below. And with that, this project is coming to an end. Thank you all very, very much. We'll see you in the next one. Happy modeling.